When? 2-21-31. In R Rickson County, I think Rickson Center. We, did, we had spring water in the house and no toilet inside. Brick house, round barn, and when they moved from there down to the picking farm where we where I grew up, I didn't want to go go back. I I went and hid in the horse manger. We went up after another road. Had a hard time finding me. I, had, I never had lectures until I was sophomore in high school. I had the old freezer too, an ice box, not a refrigerator. We had, we had a kerosene one just before we got electricity. And uh, so we had some way of keeping it. Otherwise, it, butcher hog. He smoked the ham and the bacon hanging out in the <laughs> in the wash house in the woodshed part of it, and want some we'd go cut cut off a chunk, and the rest of it either was canned or put in a salt barrel. And <laughs> I don't know why we didn't kick the bucket back way back then. Now they don't want you to eat any salt. Good Lord, we everything was saltier than heck back then. And so <clears throat> electricity, going to school until a sophomore, I had nothing but a Aladdin lamp it was the best light we had. For when we first got it, all we had was just 40 watt bulbs. That's <laughs> all they allowed us to have. And then we had electricity. And of course, milking, we always milking by hand. Except Dad had a gas engine pump that, that we could use a milk machine for a while there. Otherwise, we done everything by hand and horses and horses for a darn mule. I tried to make make that meter mule go back in the barn one day, and I hit him with swat, fly swatter. He all hold off and kicked me <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> That darn thing go out in the, out in the end of the morning, just by, ee oh, ee oh, you go. <laughs> darn thing. The team of horses I used most of the time were a little slower than the other one was, she, all she wanted to do was trot. And Dad would get them and they'd have we'd go around and around <laughs> trying to get her to stay straight on the road and not, not go too fast. Of course, we'd done anything walking. And then we had, would, uh, I had a riding cultivator. Dad would check the corn so he'd far, don't go both ways on it. And we would do everything then. I, I guess so I carried a shotgun with me because Back then, the darn squirrels, not squirrels, gophers, would eat a spot big as our circle right here. It cleaned, there wouldn't be nothing left. And when I got so I could carry the shotgun and pick them off. So, the, so I'm still chasing. Go, go, what I do with gophers now is at the farm up in West Salem, they would take two rolls of corn. I, right after as soon as come up. I go out there with that rat poison, stuff them down each hole. I, I never saw a gopher this morning today when I was working the soil, so I think I got a pretty <laughs> thin dog. But like I did with the uh, gosh darn raccoons, they wanted to get in my sweet corn. And if I couldn't get in that, then they touched there in my field corn down. So I used a, I had a little drink I gave them a little bit of fly bait, those coke. 
They go about as far as me to Dave. That's as far as they get. You used to see them the next morning. I had the one there by the garden. <laughs> the darn bugger, I, corn was close. There's an ear hanging pretty close. <laughs> he'd reach over and try to get it. And then it would come down and he'd get bumped. He hit me with electricity. And so after he did this twice, I put a trap on to her neck. Caught it. He, right close to where he went, and I got him to that the next night. <laughs> I remember. So I, I'm still a trapper. I've been a trapper all my life. I, Used to chase muskrat, mink, and what have you, but. Uh, <laughs> but why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I used to lay down in the grass and look at the moon. Keep on moving. How we can ever get there the day from the end when we turn. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. My buddy, my buddy and I go up to school and we do some trick or treating. And one night we was there and there's a car load unloaded. And we ducked into the ditch. And then later on, they started working on taking a water pump handle off. We let out a small grow. <laughs> they disappeared and nothing flat. <laughs> but we, like I say, we always had done tricks. Then I had, to, I had this one neighbor that at one time, my dad sent me over to open a field of corn for Phil and Silo. And he thought, I guess, it was too long and I'd come back just about in time to eat. He wasn't going to let me eat. <laughs> well, the next time at Halloween, he ended up with flypaper on his foot. <laughs> so, and uh, I think we also done, done something with these milk, milk things to end up on the roof. <laughs> Did a lot of fishing out of the creek there. We swim out of it. Stinking frogs make all good bait for catfish. Jesus. I caught a three pounder there one night, one morning. Man alive. That, that was big, Joe. Milk creek. The first time I got started on trout feeding, I was up with my uncle who was Bob Saban. He was on a rental farm in the yard. <laughs> Can't fish from his farm I mean, on his land, so I don't think you can fish from the bridge. So I got a pole from him and dug a few worms and walked down there. I looked at it, and there he laid. One, one about this long. You lay in the shallow water, wait for some, something to eat. Boy, he comes out, and I dropped it in. He hit that thing, and I brought it right up onto the road, and that got me started trout fishing. So I've been a trout fisher ever since. So. Well, when I was younger, we, we had Miss Josie Sir. She, she loved to fish, but she lived on the other side of the river, my milk creek. And, I'd go down there, and she was fishing. And when I got on my side, I threw, threw them over to her. And that, we did that several different times. <laughs> I was there for 
the Jacobson boys, I was over there one day, we out the pasture, her pasture had a picnic. I don't know, I got, got the, this guy was friends with mother and dad, but he hated kids. So anyway, we frogging around, we started some rocks rolling, small ones, and finally I got one, found the old fence post, this great big son of a gun. Got him up on edge and started down there. It went through that thing, hit the wood poles, and it just went down like a toothpick. <laughs> He's hollering at me, and we took off that, but I didn't go far enough. He caught up to us. I, I didn't figure he'd keep come over the hill, but he did. He thought I was neighbor boy Troxel boy. That's who he thought it was. He didn't know who I was. Thank goodness. <laughs> Cart, they take the milk to the cheese factory and uh, somebody's tools for, for milking. So you put it on top of the milk house? On top of the milk house. Why? Cause we got mad at him. He was trying to get after us for something. That, <laughs> because I didn't, he didn't think we was working hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, uh, you got a bigger side than we have. I said, but you never show to anybody, only yourself show up to help. I said, my dad and I both are here working. When he got, when he got, he got canned anyway. <laughs> oh, that when I was a little guy, I was probably five or maybe six. And we the balcony, we thought this, uh, it was uh, Santa Claus in the car. He stopped out there. But anyway, we got in the house and they had this dump truck with lights on it, all metal. I, you know, I thought that was the best thing I had. For, and then I ended up getting a little grater and stuff like that. We had a lime pile. We, uh, that's been turned over several times. <laughs> Sixteen, Dad got me a shotgun. And I did a lot of squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting. And, and then that one day I went out and I jumped a covey of quail and I, I shot the thing. <laughs> But it wasn't any for your dad. All I had is a handful of feathers. <laughs> so I said, no more, no more of that. That's why I never, never shot it in another one. I used it. We had pheasants back then when I grew up, and they would come up behind the house, sit on a fence, a quarter post, and crow. So I shot a lot of pheasants in my time down there. The only time we fed my brother and I fed on is we got down by Twin Bluffs. And uh, we started out, he came kind of late, but anyway, we started out to, through the marsh there. I could see him swoop. And one very long, we come to a spot, we decided to rest. And, between him and me, which is like me to you. He was there and was just crouched, crouched just, just hugging the ground. But he wasn't in position for me to shoot. I told him to a friend to shoot to shoot his head off or top of his head. So he, he, he got him too. That's the only time we ever went on dead. But I got on the dead lot of hunting with a, what used to be our mailman. We get together. He had a dog. I had a dog. Boy, we raised one up. That bugger wouldn't get from here to that railing out there. He was down. That's what I used to do. It was quick with a shotgun. Sometimes I, I, I thought you had a single shot. Yeah, I have, but I got, <laughs> but I quit out shells pretty fast. I take a couple of my fingers here. Out and then bang again. We used to practice 
coming out of the neighbor's silo. He'd go in and chase them out, and I'd pick them off four out of five. One time, I up, we was up north. We were moose hunting, I guess it was Howard, and there was a covey of ducks out there. These guys, you got to talk about it. He said, anybody got a shotgun? I said, yeah, I do. Said, you get the front here and I'll, go, I'll circle around. So I circled around. I did, they got as, I got as close as I am to him. And they started to raise and I, I got four out of five for the out of the range. He said, I thought you only had a single shot. I said, yeah. One, one at a time. <laughs> and that was the time we went out uh, in this island that we was hunting for boats. We should have crawled on top of the sh sh little shanty we were staying in, <laughs> little hunting shack, because he come in every night. We didn't get smart enough to crawl up there and lay down. But uh, we had kind of running out of food and had big high waves. And it was Howard. It was Howard, yeah. And one morning he got up and said, we're, we're going to move. OK. <laughs> but instead of going right back where we should have went, we started to go around the island and went up another bay, little bay and we found fresh moose tracks crossing the, through the ice, stepping. We stayed there as long as it, we got cold and finally we'd give up, go back out. Then I went to the other side of the island and come up and there's a group, another group, they were trying to start a fire with gasoline. And he was talking to him about how, how to get back. He didn't know he was on the other side of the island. I knew where it was. He, he turned to me, he said, are they right? I said, yeah. He still didn't really believe it. So we got up to the turn to go to camp. Then he knew I was right. Yeah. But the next morning, one of the, it was the best day we had for free, hunting. I said, he said, we're going home. We're going home? Yeah. Why? Well, I was out with the bears all night long. <laughs> he, had, he had physics, I guess. He got he had a, a diarrhea. diarrhea. And so we headed home. And he crawled, and that was that old homemade camper I made that would slide up and down. And so he'd get in the back, and so he'd lay down. And I locked the door then. <laughs> So whenever he stopped, we let him out to go to the bathroom or whatever he needed to. I pulled in home and Alice says, where's Howard? I said, just a minute. And I opened the door, <laughs> let him out. <laughs> so so he, he went to the doctor then and found out he had colitis. He, he, I knew he got nerved up. Because he ate all the food I had out there. I tried to save it so it didn't last long, and I shot the whole partridge that was hanging around. And I shot a little, little squirrel, too. I made soup out of him. <laughs> oh, he cleaned that up real quick. So when he got. got <laughs> anyway, we had quite a time on, on that. We didn't get any moves any move that year. Then another year later, we in, uh, started north and to where we were gonna go. And all of a sudden, boom! Blew the hole in the muffler. What happened? The gosh darn rotor cracked. We made it turn around and it was all loaded with fuel. When it ignited, it blew, blew the muffler. Up, and we couldn't get it started. And you think you could get anybody to take us, take it, take care of us? No, they're busy selling ga gas and whatever. Yeah. But we got somebody from uh, another town, about 40, about 80 miles, I guess it was. 
No, we went the other way. And uh, they come and they told, I had the boat on the back and this little old gray, half ton truck. And they told us to clear down to that, that thing town. And on the way, put by this one marsh, like here standing the, the nice bull moose. So we didn't know we would ever see him again. But anyway, he, he, they fixed it up and they they fixed that rotor in there. And we left the, the noisy buffer go, and so uh, we took off and go back to where we was going. Go on. Well, I see that by the time we got getting late, I said, why don't we just pull in there by that where we saw that moose? The horse said, that sounds good. <laughs> so we pulled in there and there's a little bank right there and there's a parking kind of park, place to park. And uh, the next morning he got up and he beat it down along the marsh. And I stayed, I just crawled up on the hill right above the truck. and. Here come a, a, I see this car over there st stopped. I couldn't figure out what's going on. He was coming over the hill. Then I see the moose trying to cross the road. Then another one by, stood by me here. And all of a sudden the rifles come out the window, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I was running up the road and I guess it scared them. But they took off. They never showed up again. And I should have walked just a little bit further into the woods because he went down, evidently. And uh, Howard shot down with me doing all the shooting. I said, no, I told him what happened. While we was talking, heard the twig stamp. I, so we all got positioned, ready. It would get dark. I said, I'm going back and get up my flashlight. So I took off on a run back to the got flashlight. And, and come back up there, and I got just about back to where Howard was. Boom! I couldn't see what he was shooting at, but one shot all it took, and he put him down right beside the road. And we were the rest of the night there, cutting him up, and <laughs> getting him small enough so we could get him in the camp, and we put him in the camp, we got him in the camp about 3.30, I think it was. And we, Next morning I woke up, I, I went out. He stayed back with a truck. I said, I'd go look a little bit. And so I took off and all of a sudden I heard one beller from very far away. And what it had been, he'd been sleeping. And when I got there, he, he jumped up. And uh, there's a bush there, about like a lot of bush. And I got ready because I only had one chance for one decent shot if he comes out of it. And he never finally acquired it. He never showed. But when I went in there, look, those, he had it down to shred it down to just as high. It's supposed to be almost the ceiling. He got mad because I <laughs> disturbed him. But he didn't come after me. So. I missed him, but I, I ended up shooting a partridge, I think it was. I went, decided we better go. It started raining. I went back to Howard. I said, we we got to make a decision. Either be satisfied with our one moose and go home or take it to the freezer. And well, he said, why don't we go on to the ne next town because they talk about a lot of bear in there. So we got ready and we went to the next town and sat there waiting for a while. Everybody's dog was putting it in there watching the bears. So we left. So we went down there and then when the road turned south, goes to the United States again, we found a place there and we just pulled over and crawled in. We had a load of this one moose and us in this homemade cabin again. <laughs> and, and the mo and, we had this, the boat behind us too. So half done was more than loaded. 
we go on down, driving along, nice, nice morning. We come by this one marsh. Here's the old bullwinkle standing with his head up. His horns is one I got hanging up. Son of a gun. He, so he looked at each other and jumped out of the chatter. Shut it down, jumped out of the cab, and walked down there. He got back into the woods enough, then all of a sudden he started to go back. He wanted to cross the road. Well, that was his mistake. He tried to cross the road. We both shot, and we put him down. The only problem was, we got checking later, it's supposed to have a guide for him. <laughs> we decided we, if he had to have a guide, we'd go in and hire an Indian. <laughs> so, but we decided we were going to have to have some help to get home. So we, while we was in the town, then we called, called home. And then she went and got the kids, and you kids, and <laughs> come driving up with a trailer, and, and your mother and dad, where are you guys going? We're, we're going to Canada. Your <laughs> dad had put a sign in his clothes for lunch. And he jumped in and like <laughs> it was close for about four days. It's the longest lunch. So anyway, we took him, brought him. Uh, we got uh, loaded. Well, we decided we we had it close to the camp. We better move it across the road or back in the woods a little bit because we knew there was an outfitter <laughs> driving around. He kept flying in. We have all this. So, Anyway, we just warned, got it in, we sat down and rest, because we had fixed our supper. In they come, come driving. Guy, scout fit her, and he's hunter. They never stopped, they just drove through, back on the road, and went gone. Good thing we didn't have it there. So, so the next morning, we had it, I had breakfast fixed up. And when they drove in, I, Fixed your breakfast and we loaded up and headed it back home. Mom, she always had the roll light whip handy. Dad, he only had a razor strap hanging. And if he didn't have that, he'd have cut a switch. Uh, one day I well, there's Belkin. I went, wasn't supposed to cross the road, but I'm kind of a lover of flowers. And, and this lady was out there taking care of her flowers. I'd been all right if I wouldn't have crossed the road. But I went across and, and looking at her, her flower and talking to her. And after Dad got done milking, he started across the field and he kind of found the switch along the way. Oh, gosh. I didn't do that again. Mother always put the pies on the window so it was cool. So <laughs> Joe came around, took the screen off, <laughs> took the pie. And he, when he come in, the, in for to eat, he told him, well, look what I found. Was <laughs> big brother got a bad day. Oh, then Bob Tracy was the one for, for banana cream pie, I think it was. And I, we had set up before we go in. When she bring it in, we we're gonna grab that thing and set it cool around the table. So when it got to Bob, that's what crumbs or nothing. <laughs> Mother made her, she got the bad, bad about that. So the next day she made the pie, she handed it to him. <laughs> Wouldn't let us say touch us. We kept that side of the floor busy and it came off the top. <laughs> it settled, settled a, a long ways overnight, but we, we stuffed it. And we come up there, we had one guy who was always watching us idle for her. We was loading up. He can't cheat me <laughs> loading it too much. And we had that thing chucked full all the time. One pull away, it's on the pull and three they go. But we had a great time. And, of course, it's sergeant time. You have to watch her once in a while. You tip over a shock. Rattlesnake be under it. I didn't happen to have any, but we had one a black snake that used a boy's toilet. 
corner post, wrong street battle one day, and Boober had always played us. Why she go over there for nests every year? She did. It's a darn, darn black snake crawl up, so I'm going to eat birds. Well, you didn't have any money, so it was fine. You could buy a cow for $12. Oh, wow. Yeah. And eggs were probably 10 cents a dozen. <laughs> Something like that. Is. You, you don't have anything to worry about. All you get is enough money to keep, keep some clothes on and keep covered up. But now I don't need it. <laughs> We were over to, they had the farm over at the show at Gotham, and it had to settle, ever, settle up every, I don't know, six months or something like that. And this guy, he had to pay dad and then mother some money. And what did he do? He went out there to this hollow tree. He had money buried in that can in that hollow tree. Yeah. Oh, no. See, when the Depression come along, the banks, they wouldn't trust the bank whatsoever. Carpool. I ended up being a private to a corporal. If I'd have stayed in another term, I'd have been, I'd have been so, uh, sorry, I would, but actually what I should have done is, just before he get out, they, uh, we took a test and there was two or three of us who were offered a chance to go to OCS to be officers. We had a wedding plan for that, but vacation so so we didn't didn't go and I didn't know quite what I wanted to go in do at the time and I knew we had all the invitations out we, we'd have to cancel the son of the guns and see I couldn't but except that I couldn't get married until after I got my commission and if we did have an old war we we'd in we we're such a traveler anyway We had this, when we first got in, this guy, his name was Yes. His name ended up with a Yes. The sergeant came asking, what is your name? Yes, sir. Don't get smart at me. Now, what is your name? Yes, sir. This is going on for a while. <laughs> you get a kick out of what listening to him, but that's finally he figured out that his name was Yes. And then another time, another one was guess. Guess, oh, gee. <laughs> that was, a, but I had one, then one in the PFC. He just couldn't do anything right. They tell him, he, he, he didn't get dressed like he's supposed to or shaved. Shave with your bed. <laughs> oh, God, what a day for the time he had. But then I, of course, uh, I had, as one sergeant, we, we were on maneuvers, learning learning about beach landing and all this. And, and one thing I found out, I figured if I could ride that darn boat in for landing craft and keep everything down, I could ride anything, and I did. But the only problem is when you get there and they drop that gate and you get out there and a darn wave hits you in the back, he had the, I had the barrel, big long barrel, that, uh, 81 milliliter mortar on my back plus my pack. It hit me and <laughs> it knocked me down. It hit me real hard. And I come up just a sputter. And he, my gunny sergeant, he's really serious. He it tickled him so he just sat out and laughed. <laughs> and. Uh, and later, after we got on shore, we, cause we had to dig a foxhole to make a beach landing, and 
<laughs> and we wouldn't know where we'd get started in one, and he'd want to move to another one. Yeah, we, I, we argued over those foxholes, and I said, when you want one, we haven't moved three feet harder from the first one. I said, if we get, you decide where you want it, we'll bury you with this. <laughs> So I made up my mind and we, that was it. It was the last of that frogging around. But, but we understand we, when we get to the beach, we'd have to dig a foxhole right quick. Get get down below the sight of anybody else shooting at you. And later on, on come Sunday, I got my Bob Bible out and was reading it. He come out there and he said, you go that away and read the Marine Corps Bible. I told him to take that thing and wipe, wipe his butt with it. <laughs> and this, this argument went on for about 15 minutes or more. And pretty soon he, he disappeared. My buddy was standing there listening to all. He said, you're going to get, get run up for this. I said, no way. I told him nothing but the truth. <laughs> but all I said, uh, and it, we never did hear it more from him either. So we got got around that. Well, at the same time, she come out to visit the very come with some other girls to visit the son there. But it was, she was sitting on the, on the booze. I was in boot camp, and. Uh, you're supposed to have, when you have a break before lunch, you have to be cleaning your rifle or cleaning your gear and doing your clothes and what have you. And one day I I figured <laughs> getting a little salty, as you might say, it's, it's kind of smart in this. I, I had the time, I had everything done. So I, and pretty soon he'd come the sergeant, he said, what are you doing, Sonny boy? Well, I'm writing a letter home. Are you supposed to be doing that? What is that? I had nothing else to do. He went around the time and said, you come with me. So we went in the office then, and I, of course, they have this stuff, whole lingo you had. I had everything right down the path. I put her ahead of him all the time. And he said, what am I going to do with this? Well, the only thing you can think of is hold my rifle over my head until, until lunchtime. So uh, we did. That was fine. After the first minute or so, all the blood run out. You can stay there the rest of the day if you want to. <laughs> well, when it come down, then, it, oh boy. Felt kind of funny when I did, but I just kept a little smarter. I sneak things around a little more. I still still get away with a lot. But uh, we done a lot of maneuvers, and I know it was <laughs> one time at 29 Palms. We, I was doing guard duty and cold that night. Well, she's supposed to stay awake. And, and what I did is, well, that was when I first one come back to, uh, that wasn't 29 Palms, that was at Camp Pendleton. And I was, got up to walk duty. I went around the thing once, and I, I, I had been going night and day, and I didn't have enough sleep. I sat down and I, right away, and all of a sudden I woke, woke up, I got up and got up to go, and about that time, here comes the sergeant to check the guard. So I, I made it just, I just made it there. Otherwise, I'd be walking bullshit, probably. And then, we, like I say, when he's over there to 29 Palm on the foxhole, I was cold. I had it down deep enough. I got, got a little bit of that grease wood there started. And it was nice when I sat there over it. And then Sarge came up and checked me. He, he never had a suspicion of it. 
evidently because he, he did, he never said any of it. We come in from the range one day and holy smokes, they were packing up the, the, the PX. And I thought, what in the heck, we're up to something already. So, but I know they, the next few days, they were bringing troops in because we were short of some, but they brought in twice what needed. So they had to, what to do about it with own. And I had this, they had a rack for me in on the ship already. And, but they had, took all my records, went aboard ship, and I, they took us out to march. We were gonna go down to the board ship Read off a bunch of names to put them down to just the right number. I happen to be one of them. And Aldridge is another one. So, so we didn't, we uh, went, they marched us off to an empty barracks. No blankets. We slept between <laughs> mattresses <laughs> to keep warm. And this went on for days. We check, check, they check us for who was there, and someone would answer somebody that wasn't there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And these some of these guys were, were taking off and getting out with a soda packer for a Liberty card. I didn't happen to go, but anyway, they. We finally decided we were going to get paid. We were going to have to get hooked into some some outfit. So we ended up being the, in the 12th Marines motor pool. And of course Aldrich, he ended up in the uh, kitchen. kitchen all the time. And so he, the first, he was the first one to do it, he's in the kitchen. But I drove everything that had wheels on. And then we was in a, when we were driving, we decided to bring a bunch of a convoy of vehicles from Pendleton, from, from, from the desert, of, what the devil's the name of that place out there? 29 Palms? Yeah, 29 Palms. And, uh, and we was going to come through, we have to go, come through San, San Bernardino, Someone didn't know the way around. I happened to know the way around, so I I followed through, and I began to notice a vehicle here, a vehicle here. I looked at my gauge and said, "Oh." -oh. So I figured then, that for every hill, I shut it off and coasted down. <laughs> and when I pulled into the camp panel, camp in the bivouac there to um, um, leave the vehicle. Chug, 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 done. <laughs> I had it figured out just right. I, and they were all the next day trying to get that but rest that bunch in the camp handle. They, they ran out of gas. They, poor, they didn't have no wet supplies. And poor, poor leadership on that one. But, I outsmarted them, so I kind of <laughs> took off on leave there. Uh, but we take a Jeep, we was trying it. We've done that there and think just put it like this up the hill. We have put it on a cable and, and keep it right side up to, to get it to the top. So, yeah, that was quite a team. I what I, I liked that one time we went winter training up in the mountains, and we got up there nice sun sunshiny day, and we got up the next morning and couldn't figure out why I couldn't hardly get out. We had snow on top of our tent, push it right down to us, <laughs> and. I can't remember if I had that little Hawaiian boy with me too in the pup tent. But we went out and went uh, across the river, hand over hand. And I said, see, he tried, he, he put him on the, on the first one, he got halfway. 
He fell down in the water. Ice cold water. And he's from Hawaii. I didn't see no more of him. They took him back to camp to thaw him out and sent him back to Bent Pedals. Yeah. But we, anyway, they come out with snowshoes and skis, and I took the skis and went up way, way up the mountain and come skiing down through the trees. And they, <laughs> Sarge didn't see me till I come out the end. And all. Oh well. And the snowshoes, the first time I ever had a bomb, we had a race. I won that race. So, so I could I could make I tell I was good in Norwegian and could get, get on skis and away I go. And that's when you had nothing to ice you stick your toe in and go in no strapped on. Yeah, we had it's quite a time. We go out in the camp and come on the way back. Pendleton and I would do cool training. They had a beer bust. And boy, oh boy, I, I two, me and another guy could clean out that whole gosh darn platoon because it, it was all so drunk. And I just about went over the hill on it because I wasn't used to something like that. And, and finally I decided I. I left a bunch for a while and then I come back and joined with them, so sat down and they, they kind of, they kind of took me on then after that. And they needed somebody to fire, come to me, so. Yeah, we had a lot, a lot of experiences with that. And I enjoyed every minute of it too. I kind of feel like Daryl. We kind of wish we'd got into a little action because we all drilled for it and never got to use it. So, yeah, we had so you meet somebody, you like, try to put prowl on at night and run onto a, some guard duty. We knew just how to put him out of commission, not fire a shot. My great-grandparents came from Norway. Aster was the name of this town, which is just southwest of, of Oslo. And when we went out to visit this, well, we was over, went to the Netherlands, so we went to Oslo. <laughs> so, great grandma's house, and a lot of things was going on. Yes. Yeah, on the first wife she ever left. But evidently, I think they figured the time they come in when they come over, they have to have a sponsor. The serves with the sponsors for them, and uh, they came over. Grandma and great grandma and grandpa came over with two boys and two girls, and one married uh, Jacobson and Paulson. and Paulson. Yeah, Paulson had a whole slug of girls, <laughs> oh, and uh, Jacobson had a boy and a girl, Melvin and and the other was, was married. Uh, Banker, I guess it was. And then uh, the one that did, did, he was a young man yet, uh, he got pneumonia and pa passed away. And then Grandpa went and got married then. <laughs> it was a gal that she mar he married. She, she left in Norway because they wanted her to marry somebody and she, she didn't want to. They she come over here and they got married and they had well, there's well, there seven kids, I think it was. I think it was Clara, Dad, uh, uh, Eleonora, Esther, Axel. Axel, and there's one that didn't make it. 
when young, Dave was young. And mother side of the family, it goes, uh, one was kept out of North, uh, uh, Scotland. And there was, uh, oh, what the heck is the last name of that? I can't. Wallace. <laughs> no, that Wallace came out of Welch. Of England, he grandpa, Grandma Wallace was a. Was a <laughs> was your mother's mother a Wallace? No. No. No, she was. She was a, the uh, German, not German. She was a Scotch. Sullivan. What was your mother's? Mother's name. Well, she she was she was Wallace. Henry was, and, but her mother, she that's the English part of it. Well, we lose all our teeth, and uh, her, her mother, she she's the only grandpa I I knew. She come and I sit her in the lap, and at one time we Halloween. There was, she was there. I sat in her lap, and he got there and girl from next door, down just about a half mile away, dressed up as darkies. He just scared the heck out of me. I creep on the mother and look at the window. What was Grandma Wallace's maiden name? Grandma ha Huntley. Was it, I, Huntley came to my mind, didn't that's it? Just, one, that's it, Huntley. Huntley. Did your yeah. grandma, Cordelia? Cordelia, Torgerson yeah. Cordelia. come from Norway? Yeah, yes, grandma Your Torgerson. great-grandma did. My great-grandma, so grandma. Oh, your grandma did? Yeah, she left Norway because they wanted to marry somebody and she didn't okay. want to. Okay, but then she left. Yeah, after the boy, she had all the family and I don't know, is it, Grandpa was doing some, I suppose he calls prospecting for land in, in out west, and he wanted her to come out, and she wouldn't come. So she went, took off, was sale, selling something. Yeah, she was a traveling salesman. Yeah, she ended up with this guy up in northern Minnesota. Minneapolis, northern Minnesota. I never do it up the theater. But she was alive when I was around, but she never never showed up. The only one I, I had until I was about four years old was uh, Grandma Wallace. She is a Huntley. She was the Huntley. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 